This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Christine Leahy is joining me. Our boss just went and got us biscuits during the break, and the reason it's a big deal is because there's a legendary place in L.A. where LeBron gets his biscuits, we're told. And so one of our bosses is like... Rewind. LeBron, when he comes to L.A., he has a place he goes and gets these legendary biscuits. So he's a fan of biscuits. Well, these biscuits. Okay. And so this morning, one of our bosses is going to have breakfast there, and he said, hey, you guys want some of their biscuits? And they have chocolate chip biscuits and cranberry biscuits. And our our, our boss comes back, and he just has plain biscuits. And I'm like, I can make plain biscuits. Like, do they want us to just be plain biscuits? No, they want us to be the chocolate chip and the cranberry. Right. With a little flavor. So the messaging from our boss is just be boring. A plain biscuit. Although I will say that the base was very good. We just need to add a little flavor on top. Just like good hosts. Next time, yeah. Otherwise, Otherwise, we're all just biscuits. What's the point of that? Very disappointed with our management right now. Also, your veganism just went out the window. Know, that stinks. You know, I've been giving veganism a lot of thought, and I think I'm done with it. I knew you were done with it before you started. Yeah, it came down to support my wife or eat more bacon, and I, she lost that one. And I love her, but bacon or wife, I went bacon on that. I feel terrible. Anywho, let's get to the important stuff. Okay, so yesterday I gave out the NFC. And I predicted it. And I spent a lot of time on this stuff. It's really sad. I look at the miles you travel. I look at your acquisitions. uh, I look at your strengths and weaknesses. I am a big believer that best coach-quarterback combo always wins a division. You know, worst quarterback in a division, despite having a great roster, does not win a division. I go to all – I check out everything. We have somebody in our company that basically – one of the things he does, he makes up this – travel log and if you're traveling over 30,000 miles that's why I love Green Bay so much yesterday they travel 8,000 miles other teams travel 32 31 it matters by Thanksgiving teams get worn out it's a physical attrition game Dustin is amazing and Dustin from research does our travel log he's like he's like that guy that goes across Europe Rick Steves with a backpack Amsterdam they smoke pot here but the food is terrific that's what he does for us with NFL schedules. There's Dustin from Research. So, hi, Dustin. Terrific. Put that backpack on and go to Amsterdam, too. All right, here we go. Let's do some music. Let's Collins pre-preseason predictions. Let's start with the AFC West. Oakland, I'll have them winning the division at 10-6. and six. Now, they won nine one-possession games last year. They're not going to win all their one-possession games this year. And I do think their defensive line is pretty average, and it's missing one of their top linemen. And they have a lame duck stadium issue. A little bit like Dallas, I think they could be a better team, but just have a worse record. I think Derek Carr is magical. Their offensive line is tremendous. They've got good skill people at running back, tight end, and wide receiver. And I think they win the division. The L.A. Chargers, I think, will surprise some people and go 9-7. and seven. Listen, they have a stadium transition issue, but there's nobody tougher that works harder than Phillip Rivers, who will be a Hall of Famer. Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram are going to be better in this new defensive scheme, I'm told. Wide receiver health, once again, their top draft pick at that position is hurt. They lost several close games last year, opposite of the Raiders, and I think they'll win a few of those. Nine and seven, bolts. I have Kansas City pulling back at eight and eight, and you know how much I love Andy Reid. But their schedule's tough. At New England, at Houston, at Dallas, at New York Giants. They're on television eight times in prime time, meaning a lot of shorter weeks. And I thought Alex Smith showed signs of erosion last year with only 15 touchdowns and eight interceptions. They pull back a little, despite some stars I love and a coach I love at 8-8. Eight and eight. And finally, Denver. I was told two weeks ago the coaches there are concerned with Paxton Lynch. Did they whip on a first-round pick? We have now had two reported stories. Things are not going well for Paxton Lynch. I think the defense is great, but in key spots, it's aging. And they have the worst quarterback in division and the least experienced head coach. That's a bad combo. They finish last at 6-10. and 10. Now I'm going to go to the AFC North. I think Pittsburgh 11-5, and five, and I was cautious here. They could do better because the division's eroding. The Bengals coach will miss time. They're fading. Baltimore is just okay, and Cleveland's in a rebuild mode. Big Ben is still way above average, and the players play hard for Mike Tomlin. 
I think they may have the best weapons in the NFL along with Atlanta offensively. And their defense is super talented, young, but they've gained valuable experience. Pittsburgh 11-5 wins the division. I'm going to go Cincinnati at 8-8. Eight and eight. Andy Dalton's a B quarterback, and this is a B record. I do like the acquisition of Joe Mixon coupled with Jeremy Hill at running back. But their offensive line is the weakest. Yep, even weaker than Cleveland's in this division. I have them at 8-8. Eight and eight. Baltimore is a tough call because I really like the organization. But that offense is mostly a BB gun. They have no running game. The defense will have to win for them and might. They added Brandon Carr at corner and Tony Jefferson at safety. And both guys can play. Their front seven strong. C.J. Mosley is a tremendous inside linebacker. They're going to be in low-scoring games. But I don't think they have enough firepower in a firepower league to do better than 8-8. Eight and eight. And finally, Cleveland. It's easy to say they're bad, but I do like some of the things they're doing. I just have no idea who their quarterback is. They've got some interesting young wide receivers, and they have done a nice job building their offensive line. But there won't be a single game they play this year where they'll have the better quarterback. I have them at 5-11. and 11. Let's go to the AFC South, a very, very interesting division. Tennessee winning the division was not a tough call for me. Marcus Mariota's got good weapons, good O-line, and nice running backs. And he had 26 touchdowns and nine picks. The kid's the real deal. He just needs more time. Their defense with a really, really a sieve on the back end. But they added a really good cornerback in Logan Ryan from the Patriots and another one to boot. Their schedule's pretty easy. They get Jacksonville twice. They may get Indianapolis once without Andrew Luck. They do play the Seahawks, but at home. And they get San Francisco and the Rams. Pretty easy choice here. Tennessee at 11-5. and five. Indianapolis is the toughest team in the division for me to predict because I just don't know if Andrew Luck's going to play in the first month. I think he will play eventually. Indianapolis in second place at 10-6. and six. They have a new GM who loaded up in the secondary during the draft, and I liked his moves. I do think their offensive line improved last year. I think their running game improved last year. And I think their defense is young and getting better, especially in the back end. But I don't know where Andrew Luck's playing and when he's playing, so I put him in second place. Houston's always been tricky for me because I love their roster, but Tom Savage is the quarterback. He's never thrown a touchdown pass in the NFL. I repeat, he's never thrown a touchdown pass in the league he now plays. I have him an 8-8. Eight and eight. Their schedule's pretty brutal. At New England, at Seattle. They have to play Baltimore there on Monday night. That'll be emotionally tough. And they also face the Steelers. They have a tremendous defensive front, but they have for years, and they still never advance to where they should. I've got them 8-8, eight and eight, maybe low, but that's where I have them. Jacksonville, I think they have talent, but they just don't have it at quarterback, where Blake Bortles has become an interception machine even in the preseason. Doug Marone's the head coach, could be good, I don't know. I think the defense is talented. Leonard Fournette at running back, I can't wait to watch him. But I've been overbilling and overselling this team for years. I got them at 5-11. and 11. And finally, the AFC East. New England's good. Let's not argue that. This roster, veterans, and youth is built to win it all. Offensive line and running back are good, not great, but good enough. Their schedule's not easy. They have to go to Pittsburgh and to Oakland. They play Carolina and Atlanta. They go to Denver. They've always struggled there. But this is the best coach and the best quarterback and the best owner and the most stability in a division with virtually none. It is very possible they will go 6-0 in division. Brandon Cook's acquisition at wide receiver, it won't be Randy Moss coming to New England, but he could be a 12 to 1300 yard acquisition. This roster is built to win the Super Bowl and I think they'll get there, 14 and 2. I've got Miami at 9 and 7. Now, they were 10-6 and six last year. I'll pull a game back. But Jay Cutler, let's be honest, Ryan Tannehill last year was 19 touchdowns and 12 picks. I think Cutler can do that. Their defensive line has Indomitian Sue and Cameron Wake. I love them both. Their schedule early is pretty easy, giving Jay Cutler the opportunity, Tampa, L.A., at the Jets in New Orleans. Jay Cutler can slowly move in and get the feet under him. And Jay Ajayi is a running back who is an absolute horse who they can lean on early along with that schedule and defense. Miami at 9-7 and seven buys for a playoff spot. 
I'm going to bet Buffalo at 7-9. and nine. They have a tremendous run-blocking offensive line. And their running game with ball control makes Buffalo dangerous. But Sammy Watkins can't stay healthy. Tyrod Taylor's fine, but not spectacular. That equals 7-9 and nine to me. And finally, the New York Jets. I'm sorry, but I have them at 0 16. The quarterback situation is bad as any I remember. I have their over under at four, and that's how touchdown scored this season. I don't like their owner. Quarterback's atrocious. Best receiver just got hurt. Their offensive line shaky. The only really talent I can count on is on the defensive front. But what will it matter? They'll be on the field the entire game. Here's their schedule. Tell me where I'm wrong. I have the New York Jets at 0-16, and, and therefore the number one pick in the NFL draft as Cleveland and San Francisco rebuild. But I think with offensive minds, can win some actual games. The New York Jets at 0-16. There you go. Very proud of that. I feel very Your strong. Your predictions? I really am. Would you feel comfortable telling people to go put money on those predictions? I never tell people where to put their money. But I feel of all the divisions, the AFC East, I feel most strongly about. Um, I think New York, I think the Jets are the worst offense I have seen. In fact, the only thing I can compare them to would be the Rams last year. Um, and the Rams had a star running back. And a couple of old linemen I sort of liked, and Tavon Austin. Um, it is hard to imagine them winning a game. So I feel like the same way I do about Conor McGregor. I don't think he's going to win a round. I don't think he's. I don't think he's going to land a punch. So when I, even though it sounds harsh, that's what I really truly believe. And I think New England is, with all the chaos in that division. Now listen, the, the Jets are tanking. Uh, Buffalo's kind of C plus at quarterback. I, I actually think Miami. I think they're going to be kind of what they were last year, a team that doesn't have a chance to win the Super Bowl, good defensive players, stud running back, easy early schedule. And I think you'll look up at the end of the year and Miami's in a playoff chase. I don't think Jay Cutler is, is – is, I think he and Ryan Tannehill feel about the same to me. They really do. I think obviously Tannehill was more mobile, but he doesn't throw a very good deep route, and Jay Cutler does, and I think it's kind of the same quarterback. So there you go. This Sunday, don't miss Warren Moon's going to be joining us live from Seahawk Camp. Excited for that, my hometown. This Sunday, don't miss the new epic series, Get Shorty. It's a new original series inspired by the best-selling novel from Elmore Leonard. Get 